All right. Okay. Well, okay, right. We're in chapter 26 of the commentary on uh, Corinthians. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go. Just gonna down the uh, game a little bit. Hope you're enjoying this. All right. Time to go. The nature of communion. All right. Oops. Nope. No, I'll try again. Is it? There we go. Let's go. Twenty six. The nature of communion. First Corinthians chapter ten, verses fourteen to twenty two. Therefore, wherefore, yeah, it's sure, I don't know. Two, is that a feast or a famine when they, it comes to gain? There's a huge difference. Just try again. 26. The nature of communion. Okay, there's something wrong here. It's not recording. Why is it not recording? Here we go. 26. The nature of communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 to 22. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which... See, I only put it down like one point and it's uh, going nuts. It's going bananas. Uh why is that? And is it going to punch and roll? I tried uh, different settings. I'm really not at all used to this program yet. Not that I knew the intricacies of uh, Reaper, that is, but... Uh, Judge ye what I say. A cup of blessing which... Okay, right. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice, yeah. curse of the altar. What say I then, that the idol is anything? But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God, and they would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord, and the cup of devils, we cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? A bit of background noise. Again, I, I just reduced the level from 27 to 26 and it's gone down dramatically. <laughs> Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? In chapter 8, verses 1 to 8, Paul discusses the question of meats offered to idols. And in chapter 8, verses 9 to 13, he sets forth his conclusions. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 to 33, he returns to the same subject. His reason for doing so is theological. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 to 18, Paul points out that sexual union is a form of union that makes the two, the twin, one flesh, a doctrine first set forth in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Communion, we are... Flesh, a doctrine first set forth in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Communion, we are soon to be told, means a community of life. It sets forth our membership in the new humanity of the last Adam, Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 following. The two doctrines cannot be confused, but there is a parallel. 
and membership in a new corporate estate. One body, one flesh, one life. Because of this, Paul begins verse 14 with the word, wherefore, that is, because of this. More than a simple admonition is meant. Flee from idolatry, because it involves much more than simply false worship. Just as godly marriage is a way of life, so too, and even more so, is the worship of our true Lord Jesus Christ the way of life for us. Have the weak and the strong understood this? Paul, in verse 15, asks, I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Paul speaks equally here to those who are faithful in their marriage and to those who are faithful in their worship to tell them that more is involved in outward conformity. His rebuke to the immoral has been made strongly and clearly. Now he speaks to all. There is more to our allegiance to Christ than superficial belief and conformity, the way of life is involved. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is not the communion of the body of Christ. Verse 16. The bread and wine signify Christ's humility. Oh, I was a bit too nonchalant. Is not the communion of the body of Christ. Verse 16. The bread and wine signify Christ's humanity, so that we, in partaking thereof, are members of his true humanity, of the new human race of the last Adam. Here is a basic doctrine of the faith and an area of great misunderstanding. When we partake of Christ, of the elements, we do not become members of his deity. This is a false doctrine which is now very popular in Eastern Orthodox circles. It is, to say the least, heretical. We partake in the new humanity of Christ, in the new human race which he, as the last Adam, has created. The difference is an enormous one. We do not become gods. We become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Background noises. Yeah, I'm going to pause it. I'm afraid I uh, neglected to actually hit the record button again. So that means that uh, you didn't get the rest of the chapter, but I'm not going to go and re-record it. So I'm sorry. That is life, I'm afraid. So uh, see you in the next one.